How difficult was it to come up with some sort of scenario, some sort of roadmap for 2023? Well, thanks. It's, it's nice to be here with you. You know, I, I think the most striking thing about our outlook is that we are expecting 2023 to look very different. You know, I think 2022 was a year marked by extremely expensive starting valuations, resilient growth, very high, surprisingly high inflation, and then very hawkish policy. When we think about next year, you know, all of those elements are somewhat different. Valuations are normalized. We think growth will be weaker. But inflation will be lower and policy will be a lot less hawkish. So, you know, I think that that's for 2023 a, a consistent story, but also a very different story than what we've just seen this year. Right now, people are talking about a first half that's really painful, a second half that's positive, the melt up in 2023. How much do you buy into this belief that we're going to get some sort of peak inflation leading to a sense of an end that will come around June, July of 2023? Yeah, so I, so I think if I look at our outlook, you, you really have some 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 competing forces, uh, good versus bad. I think on the good side, we're, we're, we are in the camp that the Fed will be early to pause. We think the last Fed hike is in January. We think inflation will come down at a pretty healthy clip over 2023, both things that are quite helpful. But we also think earnings have a lot of downside in the U.S. My colleague Mike Wilson is you know more than 10 percent below consensus uh, for, for yeah. earnings uh, in, in 2023. And so we think those competing forces mean that you want to be focused. Right. for now on high quality fixed income and later on trying to be more bullish on it. And, and this is a really important question for global, uh, global Wall Street. With great respect, Andrew Sheets, for your shop and the legacy of Stephen Roach, you guys fight visibly like cats and dogs. It's wonderful to see the Morgan Stanley process. I have a huge respect for it, folks. What's a distinctive debate right now? What's the singular thing that you're arguing about at Morgan Stanley? So I, I think there are a few things. We're always we're always debating. Uh, there are always a number of things under debate. I think this idea that inflation comes down and will it finally come down in 2023? Inflation was very hard to forecast in 2022. We struggled with forecasting inflation. The Fed struggled with it. A lot of forecasters struggled with it. I think there are a lot of good reasons why inflation comes down in 2023. <clears throat> but I think it's something that clearly there's a lot of right. uh, doubt around, uh, uncertainty around, given how hard it was to forecast. And then also I think this question of can the Fed really pause without reversing the progress that it's made in tightening financial conditions, right? Almost by definition, once it stops hiking, it's easing. And does that kind of work against everything right. the Fed's trying to achieve? So it's kind of how does it message that is, I think, a big debate. So then what do you and Ellen Zentner make of the new accommodation witnessed in the Bloomberg Financial Conditions Index moving from a negative one standard deviation to a negative 0.5 standard deviation, shockingly accommodative over, let's like, say, the last 20 days? Yeah, so I, I do think this is a challenge the Fed is going to have, and, and we don't think, you know, we, we forecast the, lead, the last Fed hike to be in January, but we don't think, you know, at that January meeting, the Fed throws up its hands and says, this is it, you know, we're, we're done. We think the Fed will will hike in January, and then as inflation continues to moderate into the first quarter, they will just simply be on hold. They will monitor the situation. They will emphasize that, that hiking works with a long and variable leg. And we've just had the fastest 12-month pace of hiking in 40 years. So it, right. it wants to see how that plays out. But but clearly, as you mentioned, that, that easing of financial conditions is a, is a challenge and I think is something the Fed takes quite seriously. 